welcome to the webinar talk show. I'm Eliz Green. And my name is Tom Singer. And Eliz and I decided when this whole stay at home order thing started and webinars, people were on three or four a day. We decided from the beginning that a webinar, it can be more than a talking head over PowerPoint. So we created this program called the webinar talk show, where we can show you how to get great content from thought leaders without them just droning on over PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> and wow, do we have a couple of great guests. We have two guests today, Tom. Is that the first and time we've had two, two guests at once? I think it is. I and I could not be more excited. I've known Kim and Jason for a very long time. And in fact, they were part of my first mastermind group. So I got to see them right at the beginning of their career, and they have been talking about content, a concept they call adult-itis and fighting adult-itis for that entire time. Now, I will tell you, there were those of us amongst the speaker community who were like, mm, sure, that's nice. Let's just wait and see what happens when they have kids, because we all know adulthood hits hard and heavy when you become parents. Yes, but I have to add that I met them right after their first daughter was born, and they were able to live that brand with a baby in tow. They were out doing their work. I thought that was really good. And now they have three children. <laughs> they run their business from their home. I think they have a lot to teach us about how to do that well, because I know all of us are heading into a summer where, you know, the kids may be at home a little bit more than they have in the past, and we may be at home a little bit more than we have in the past. So I would, it's just my joy to introduce all of you to Kim and Jason Kotecki, people who live their brand every day. Welcome, Kim and Jason. Welcome. Hey guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks for joining us. So tell us what adult-itis is and why are you fighting it? Well, adult-itis, quite literally for anyone in the uh, healthcare background or if you paid attention to science class would know that it means swelling of the adult, which sums <laughs> it up pretty well. If you're walking around with too much adult, meaning in our case, uh, you forgot what it was like to be a kid you're not curious, you're not enthusiastic mm -hmm. or passionate, you forgot how to, to play, you take yourself too seriously, that is adultitis. And so we're fighting that in ourselves, in others, in the world, and helping organizations do that as well. Well, I'm imagining there are a lot of parents who are working from home and trying to homeschool their children for the first time who um, have enormous swelling of the adult at the moment. <laughs> Well, because it's overwhelming, right? There's so right. many things that the average adult has to deal with right now that they didn't have to deal with nine weeks ago because the kids went to school and mm -hmm. you got to get away from the house and go to work. And now it's all mingled together. So I imagine that things right now, this has to be crazy. Yeah, we're getting a lot of feedback from our tribe of just that overwhelm of what is a balance. And of course, that's always a conversation, a laughable one, right? Um, the myth of balance. But um, the concept of we're getting a lot of questions of like, how does that work for you guys? And the number one thing we've been saying recently, which I think you guys could probably will laugh at, but this isn't homeschooling, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> right, because you know, you know about homeschooling. You've been doing it your children's entire life. Yes, right. yes. Our kids have never gone to a traditional school. Um, and so it's one of those, and our oldest is now 11. So we've got a decade of experience having kids underfoot at home while we work. Um, mm -hmm. And it doesn't make us experts, but I, I, we do like to say that this is not homeschooling. What you're doing is survival, this e-learning, you know, this is, this is a national emergency. Mm -hmm. And because of all those things, you can do things really differently. So we're giving people a lot of permission right now to do it their way. Yeah, because mm -hmm. normally, mm -hmm. okay, so the way we do things, we have three kids and we're doing our thing. But in this case, a lot of people, if they have two or three or four kids, you've got potentially four or more different teachers or all schools. telling you what you should be like that's right. insanity and so yeah we're i mean one thing i guess we can share is like permission granting is one of our core beliefs is that children are natural learners right. and mm. so to um 
any parents out there like flipping out, like just like maybe don't worry so much about what the school is requiring and, and yeah. you know your kids best. Let them explore their own things and, and they will learn different things maybe than what would normally be in the curriculum, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a, a thing to, to kind of keep in, keep in mind is that this is not homeschooling. No. <laughs> this Every is... single parent in America is like, no, 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 no. no, no. no. This, is not, no. this is called survival. Yes. So, and like, I think social emotional health has to be a priority now more than ever. Hmm. I mean, it should always be a priority in schools, but now more than ever, the crisis that these kids have gone through of like overnight, literally, and then most kids had to go and get their stuff out of their desk. What a weird traumatic experience. I'm a former <laughs> educator. So all of this kind of comes back to like, I can't imagine the process that these children of all ages and even college students have had to mm -hmm. try to process this on an emotional level, let alone how that affects mental health. Mm -hmm. So oh, I think right. that's a number one priority that parents, like I, we've been advocating for parents to take charge of. Um, to protect their children from whatever this needs to be for them, like to set that up for success for them, um, which is, you know, maybe you're a little afraid of making the teachers mad or the districts upset. No one's going to flunk this year. No one. Right. Like, <laughs> right. Right. You know? right. So well, it's and it, good to just hear that. Sometimes. And by the way, the teachers I are know. doing the best they yeah. can. They're like yeah. trying to figure out how yeah. to make this work too. So this is not this is a, no criticism anything against teachers. It's, teachers. Just, yeah. it's just the reality of like, just all we can do is the best we can do. Yeah. And that's enough. It's it's well, and following up, uh, with, in following up with what Kim said, you were talking about, you know, kind of watching that mental health and realizing things. I kind of had my eyes open yesterday. So my daughter's been, she's a high school senior and mm -hmm. she's been, you know, she's been super about this whole thing. But last night we were talking about it and she said something that I hadn't really thought through. She said, look, I really like you and mom. You guys are good parents, but you're not my friends. Oh. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, oh, you God, like that is so that is so yeah. true. I mean, we've tried yeah. to do activities and we eat dinner together every day and things right. like that. But I don't think I had really taken to heart that she's right. I mean, we do get yeah. along great, but we're not she, you know, we're not her friends and she not needs peers. that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, just to give perspective, even from our little tribe here at, at the house, you know, yesterday we had like a little mental breakdown, right? We all do. And Ben, our eight-year-old admitted to me, he's like, I'm just kind of sick of being around all of you. <laughs> <laughs> and this was normal for us. We are around, we do a lot of travel together. So we're used to being around, but there's no one else. You know, there's right. no visits with friends. There's no swimming lessons. There's no, all this outside stuff we usually do that get us a variety of people. So uh, if, right. ben, if Ben, the homeschool kid, is saying this, right. Right. what can right. the parents... <laughs> What can right. the parents of the eight-year-old who is used to going into a social situation all day, what yeah. can they do? How can we kill the adultitis and cater to what the kids need? Oh, do, I, I think I, off the top of my head, I just think that now more than ever is such an opportunity to let them let their interests lead the way. Mm -hmm. You know, so often the constraints are time, right? And so now mm -hmm. you lift that and you say, what is possible? You know, it's like, Maybe they're YouTubing some new skills. Maybe they're um, spending more time on video games if that's what's bringing them joy right now. Like to kind of release some of these constraints that usually bind us up um, and let their interests lead the way. Yeah, and also keep in mind that they're used to being, they're used to having their schedules dictated, right? Like the right. school day and then they have extracurriculars and they got practice and recitals and they're doing this. So just to like take all of the leash off and say, do what you want is a little uncomfortable right. for them as well, because they're like, I'm, right. I'm bored. I don't know what to do because they're used to being told. And so that's another thing as parents to realize, like there might be a lot of binge watching YouTube or playing video games or things that don't look particularly useful. Productive, um, right? However, after time, they'll, start to go in different directions. And then I think the parent's job is not to dictate lessons or curriculum, but to be the coach, to be the, the facilitator. Like that's one of the things we try to do with our kids is like, if they have an interest in something, then we're like, hey, did you know about this? Or right. you should maybe try that or without being too like, again, dictatorial. But 
Um, right. There is a little bit of time where it'll, it's, hard, it's weird for them too, because they don't have someone telling them to do, but I think eventually their interests will start to take over. And, and I think our job as parents is to support them, but let them go in directions because it's amazing what kind of learning happens when it's all together. Like uh, Ben, Ben has been a little bit of a late reader, but now he's getting into it. And just this past week, he, he's had the laptop and he's writing a story about Star mm. Wars battle droid named Roger. And <laughs> he's, you know, and we're letting him spell the way he wants to spell. And sometimes he asks us, how do you spell things? This week he asked about, is there, is there a way that I can take this word and not have to retype it? And we showed him copy and paste and his head blew up. He's like, <laughs> And so it was like, and I told him, you now know more than my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys are a big fan of tinkering. Yes. Which I always, anytime you're posting on Facebook and it's, it's something about Jason is tinkering on this or one of the kids is tinkering. I, I love, I, first of all, I just love the word, but I think it's something useful, not only for the kids, for the adults as we're a little lost, you know, we're in this for a while now. I've, I've cleaned out my office. I've cleaned out my inbox. I, you know, now I'm like, what's next? <laughs> right. Yes. That's been, um, that's been kind of our strategy from day one. And again, mm -hmm. it's, we talk about it a lot. So it was sort of natural is like just exploring things. And the concept of tinkering to me is, trying things without worrying about the outcome, that the outcome is the learning. And so from, from when we first got locked down, one of the things we started to do was a daily coffee chat with our, with our people, our tribe. And we did 24 of them, it was on weekdays, and eventually burned ourselves out. And we're like, okay, this is not sustainable. Daily was hard. Um, yes. However, Every single show, I tried to learn something new. So I like tried to experiment with the camera setting or lighting or whatever. And over the course of that, it was like, wow, we did 24 shows. And so that was like 24 modules of learning that if I would have done that once a week, would have taken me 24 weeks to do. And so right. um, then that led to doing a weekly show that's live now that we're now going to have our fourth episode on. And that continues the learning. And now that's enabled us to bring something new to clients as we've been in touch with them of like, what do you need? How can we help? And so when we first started to say, hey, we should do a coffee chat, we, we didn't have this grand master plan of what it would turn out to be. And I still think there are things it's leading toward that I don't know yet, but the mentality is just to try stuff and don't be afraid to look like an idiot because a <laughs> one-year-old who is trying to learn how to walk and falls and looks like an idiot doesn't stop trying how to walk. They just like, right. oh, that's part of the process. And somehow we forget that along the way as adults, we get really self-conscious of that. And so right. um, I know you've talked in the past, Tom, you've been doing this virtual stuff for uh, years, right? And mm -hmm to see your first shows, you probably have them under lock and key because they're not very good. <laughs> just like our first shows aren't very, no one's shows are very good. And so it's just like, but that's how you get good as you start being by being bad, you know, yep. and that's part of it. Well, absolutely. And even my podcast, right? I've done almost 600 episodes mm -hmm. wow. and, you know, episodes one through a hundred don't compare. Same thing is true with, <laughs> with them seeing a conference, whether it's live in yeah. person, or whether mm -hmm. it's live virtual in that particular situation, you can't jump in and be a speaker or an MC the first time ever talking to a camera and expect it to be interesting and engaging. But after you've done 20, 30, 40 of them, it gets a lot easier. And so people have to do exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Right. So what are you doing for clients now that you've done the coffee thing and it's morphed over here to something you can do for clients? Yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. We are doing kind of a, a show format that is kind of like a morning talk show where we have the two of us, which is unique in and of itself. Similar I to know, what you guys are doing here, right? <laughs> well, you I get am to all actually about, sit next to each other. <laughs> I like that format of a, of a talk show style yeah, interview. Right? 
And, and there is something about being able to customize it for a client, which is so exciting. So like last week mm -hmm. we did one for um, a statewide association and they had members, we asked them to have members send us pictures of um, things that have been, they've been having fun with over the last mm. eight weeks. And so we literally yeah, highlighted. So I, can, I yeah. can pull up a thing like that and have the, um, the pictures set up. And then make their members, their, you know, people the hero. And so we went through, I don't know, 10, nice. 15 of these as like, mm -hmm. oh, check out what Carol did. Check out what, you know, Verdi did in Texas. And, um, and so it's been really neat to be able to use the technology to play with building them up, mm -hmm. which is something is hard mm -hmm. to do on a stage as much because, yeah. you know, you're not exactly sure who's going to be there or whatever. So um, it, that's been kind of neat, the customization yeah. piece, um, but go ahead. I was just going to say, I think one of the things that the obvious thing for a, a speaker is to be like, what can I, how can I take this that I do on stage and right. do it virtual? And like, mm -hmm. that's sort of like 1.0, right? I think the next <laughs> level is to be like, how can I take advantage of what virtual is that I couldn't do on stage? Right. And so that, I mean, like, Kim and I, before we had kids, would sometimes speak and share the stage together. That right. doesn't work mm -hmm. as well when you have babies, right? And so this yeah. is a format we can do together. Kim brings a whole nother uh, level Craziness. and perspective <laughs> and, and uh, just a different lens that is cool. And um, we can do that here. Um, one of the things, I don't know if I'll be able to do this or not, but um, as you guys know, I'm an, an artist. And so one of the things that's been kind of fun to be able to do here on um, virtually is to try to do a setup like this where I can draw on my screen here and I can talk to people and we've been doing like little little lessons uh, where I'll I'll draw something like that. <laughs> Don't screw the <laughs> and uh, it's been cool because on our weekly shows we'll do like a step-by-step -step, almost like a Bob Ross kind of thing. We mixed call it with, Bob Ross meets Zig Ziglar. Yeah you know? a, little bit of that. <laughs> a little bit of a motivation there. Yeah. It, it ties into the artwork um, and but it's like a step-by-step -step thing where people can draw with us and it's like you can put this on employee memos you can scribble it on your sidewalk in front of your house and things like that so um, oh, that's been a really cool thing that um, yes I can draw on stage but not in not in this way as easily this sort of lends itself a little bit better so um you know be able to to tie in like fun uh sound effects Are you guys having a killer time you know <laughs> just like it, it just adds a little bit different things that i couldn't do uh just on a stage so uh yeah so so far we've gotten really cool feedback from people and again one of the things we kind of thought about when this first started was, okay, I, I look at myself as a professional speaker and there are no mm -hmm. stages to speak on. And the reality is like, maybe I'm not a professional speaker. Maybe in my case, I'm a professional encourager. And that's what, how Kim and I see ourselves. So it's like, how can I be a professional encourager to our clients? And that right now is a big thing people need because they're right. Th this is as much of a psychological problem as it is a physical medical problem um, with dealing with people's mental health and being separated and working from home and all of the stuff that we've been doing with the ups and downs. And so being able to bring some perspective and some joy and some levity seems to be one thing that people really need. And so that's, that's what we're trying to help um, bring uh, to our clients. So Jason, I love the term professional encourager. And I think so yes. many of us could just steal that from you and run with it because it is what we but do. But we won't. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> or at least, we'll, them. <laughs> at least we'll give you, we'll give you credit. But, right. but my point is, is that I think like the mind of a, of a child when we're talking adultitis, kids are super resourceful and, you know, you give them the role of a paper towel and they become a pirate and they have the, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> And as adults, we don't necessarily do that. And what you just demonstrated is, I see myself as a professional speaker. That world is changing. Now I'm a professional encourager. I can do that without a stage. So what are mm -hmm. other things that people can do to just shift their point of view and be able to recreate themselves in a more sellable or, or doable manner in this strange world? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's easy to overthink it. I think 
Mm -hmm. uh, you have to look at like what what are what are the benefits you bring to people like that's on your sales page or whatever. I mean, I think of uh, entertainers like I've been happy to see someone like Jason Hewlett, mm -hmm. who is is it's like just make me laugh, like make <laughs> us laugh. We need people to make play us laugh. Music. Play your music. Right. Do your yeah. do your thing. Right. Um, don't overthink it. I think people who are who are good at at bringing, I saw the other day, uh, Neen James, right? She's, mm -hmm. she's great at productivity and helping people pay attention to what matters and get things done. And like, we kind of need that now. We need someone focus. to help us focus right. and organize with this new, uh, new situation we find ourselves in. And so the things that we're, we're good at, you know, Tom, Liz, you guys are, at NSA, you have always been good at bringing in interviews, bringing people together, Making helping put a, sh a spotlight on other people's genius. Like that doesn't have to be done in, per in person as you are shown. Right. And so I think it's, it's, it's d get out of your one way, you know, stop <laughs> overthinking it and say, what do, what do I really do? I, I think a lot of the, the old days where the, the railroad companies went out of business because they thought they were in the train business and they were really in the transportation business. And if they would have realized they were in the transportation business, maybe they would have gotten involved in airplanes or other sorts of things. And so that's- We should be, we should be flying Santa Fe, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> that, that, but we get, we get caught in that like, oh, but I'm a speaker. So I have to do this on, right. on the stage or whatever. And, and hopefully, I mean, the way I'm looking at it is that this isn't forever. Now, in our business, it's almost like once things open up, that's only the first stage for us because right. the- the mass meetings are even further down. However, they'll come back eventually. It mm -hmm. might be way longer than we want, but I'm hoping okay. like, well, if we can build a different part of our business model, then when that does come back, man, we're gonna be flying because now we've, we've diversified in such an amazing way that, that the actual getting paid to be on a stage is gravy. And I, I'm like thinking <laughs> now, the ability to do a program in my boxer shorts. <laughs> yes, pants on. Like, wait, wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> suddenly the in-person, I, yes, I have to get on a plane and spend three days out of the office. Suddenly my speaking mm -hmm. fees are getting higher and higher and higher because I'm realizing how valuable that is. So um, there's just a lot of neat things, neat ways to look at it if you give yourself permission to. I think that's so smart. And it sounds like it is so much more outcome oriented as opposed to delivery oriented. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, what can you actually provide people? You can get to the same place in any delivery system as long as you know what that outcome is going to be. Exactly. Yeah, that's totally what it is. What, what is the benefit that you deliver to a customer and how can you do that? So this is like how restaurants have shifted, right? Providing right. food is like, well, we could also do it delivery or right. curbside pickup and, right. and things like that. So, you know, that's another example is like some of those, yeah, we, we do like going out to eat. There is a certain <laughs> social thing about that. But when that comes back, hopefully these restaurants will now still have the other option for people who just, mm -hmm. who just want to stop in and grab something. And now that will make their business stronger in the long run. So uh, I think that's the way to to look at it. Um, but again, it's we're we're all going in this right. this roller coaster, and it's okay to be feel the feels and be worried and nervous and upset. But those as real as those things are, it's just as real the opportunities that we have in front of us. Wow, <laughs> twenty five minutes went really fast. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you know, that's the, that's the greatest part about this whole talk show format is it goes fast and yet you provided so many great ideas. I took like a page oh, yeah. notes as the interviewer. Thank you. Well, that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> Absolutely. So as we're closing out, if somebody is struggling just to sort of find that little bit of joy in life, a closing thought? <sighs> you got, you got something, Kim? Yeah, I think to basically use this extra time. I think, you know, everybody's focusing on what has been taken away, you know, between the weddings and the graduations and to basically kind of shift the mindset to what you now have. And that gift of time mm -hmm. is something that we all know is so priceless. So to kind of 
just shift your perspective, look at it as an opportunity to kind of be in the now a little bit more present with those who mean the most to you. Yeah. And I would say the, the idea of kind of what I alluded to is like, yeah, there's difficult challenges that we're all experiencing and those are legitimate and real. And so I, I try not to pretend like I'm just this like happy joy, joy guy all the time because uh, I try to be, but I think every day is a choice. Am I going mm. to see, uh, if I look at a field of dandelions, do I see those as weeds or do I see them as wishes? Both are true. Both mm. are totally true. Which one am I choosing to do? And I've had to remind myself that it's a daily choice in this time because it is such a up and down thing that it's like, you can't just say like, oh, I'm going to be positive and then hope that yeah. lasts forever because it doesn't. And so just the give yourself grace, I think is, is the takeaway. Well, I'm going to make the choice to see wishes today. <laughs> really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. That went so fast. And Tom, if somebody had an event that they might like Kim and Jason or Tom and Liz to be a part of, actually, before we go there, if somebody has an organization that could benefit from some encouragement, where would they find you? Um, well, that's a good, that's a good question. You can go to escapeadelhood.com slash virtual. And uh, Perfect. Any, anyone who's interested in that, that goes to our website and the, the virtual offering we have, but it also is also a homepage for all of our other stuff we have going on. So yeah. um, I, thank you for asking that. Yeah. That's awesome. great. Well, people really need to get more encouragement that direction. Where would they find us, Tom? Uh, you can go to webinartalkshow.com or you also can find us on the Facebook page. That's webinar, the, the Webinar Talk Show. So please join us there. You can find Absolutely. on the Facebook page all of the past interviews that we've done for the last several weeks. And you can kind of explore how this format is so much better than talking heads over PowerPoint. Over PowerPoint. Absolutely. We'll be back on Wednesday. We have Omukongo Dabinga talking about finding common ground in uncommon times. I'm excited for that one too. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks. Thanks you guys. Thank you.